Yeah, hello everybody. This is Mohammed Adhar from Central University of Gujarat. Today I'm talking about the basics of density functional theory, a practical guide to beginner computational chemist. Yeah. Uh, I myself is a computational chemist and also a medicinal chemist. So being in this field from last few years, I realized that computational chemists or specifically computational medicinal chemists lacks this understanding and knowledge hence motivated from this I decided to make a series of video presentations for the community so before going to the actual talk of my presentation I will first give an idea of importance of electronic structure why we bother the electronic structure why it is important so I may remind you the chemistry of the atoms, molecules, proteins or any sort of chemical identity is governed by the electrons or their electronic energy or the electron density. So whatever property you take, dipole moment, charge distribution, lattice parameters, relative stabilities or the potential energies are phases like barrier, barrier height, energy minima or maxima or the spectral properties like UV transitions, higher vibrations and NMR, chemical shifts or the molecular geometry, tetrahedral arrangement or scale planar or octahedral or the hybridization of the metal complexes like sp3 dsp3 or whatever it is or the orbital arrangement or shape so these all properties are entirely depend upon the type of the electronic structure your molecule you're having so all the properties are heavily depend the number of electron and the type of electron in the molecular system so whatever chemical identity we are having may be the protein ligand complex or the inorganic or organic system its energetics is heavily affected by this so it is very crucial to consider the electronic structure so these sort of computational methods we have in computational chemistry force field based methods are there here that does not uses any of the electronic structure whereas on the other hand we are having the DFT and Abinutio method that uses the electronic structure so computational cost time scale and the system size can be depicted on the scale of accuracy so force field based methods are trivial one that have more chances of errors but are good for larger system whereas DFT and ABG methods are very much accurate and are good for l less uh, number of atoms n uh, number of atoms so how to deal with this electronic structure so Edwin Schrodinger in 1925 gave, gave a wave function theory that state that all information is contained in the wave function so like for benzene if you want to calculate the wave function or the electronic structure or electronic thing then the wave function would be an anti-symmetric function benzene would be having 42 electrons then 3n multiplied by 3 is equal to 126 then its wave function would have 126 coordinates and would be having 42 electronic spin components having alpha and beta so this wave function is not a physical reality but a mathematical construct in reality the wave function does not exist but it gives a lot of information in of your chemical now a little bit about the quantum mechanics so Schrodinger equation is H psi which is a function of 3n coordinates of nucleus and electrons is equal to E psi so if we know the psi exact psi and operate using the Hamiltonian then we'll give it will give an energy correspond to that so the full detail detail Hamiltonian can be written as kinetic energy of nuclei repulsion of the nuclei and the attraction between nuclei and electrons and the kinetic energy of electron as well as the repulsion of electrons so these three terms are associated with the electrons and these two terms are the repulsion of uh, and repulsion and kinetic energy of the nucleus so the exact solution of this equation is impossible therefore approximations are needed to be introduced 
this negative sign term indicates the attraction whereas positive sign terms indicates the repulsions so as I told you that the exact solution of the five term Schrodinger equation is impossible so some approximations are there so the first approximation that is, is there is a bone oppenheimer approximation it decouples the nuclear and the electronic motions the fact that the nuclear size is larger than the electrons so their dynamics will also have different scale so the dynamics of electron can be separated from the nucleus the center nucleus will generate a constant field to the electron so this motion can be decoupled and the Schrodinger equation can only be divided into the having the three terms like the electronic kinetic energy electron nuclear interactions are there and the electron electron repulsions are there so for a system of n electrons the kinetic energy of the electron and the electron electron repulsions are universally constant however this term is system dependent so the physical and chemical properties of system depend on the interactions of electrons with each other or with atom code so they cannot be treated without approximations in practice DFT involves approximations of electron electrons and this limits the achievable accuracy so moving from wave function to electron density is a major theme of density functional theory a wave function which depends upon 3n coordinates that means 3 coordinates of each electron whereas electron density is depend upon 3 coordinates only so with the electron density the dimensionality is reduces and number of bases also reduces and in turn the computational cost is very much decreases so how this DFT develops so Thomas and Fermi were the first that determined that there is a one to one correspondence between electron density and the wave function of a molecule with multiple electrons however Hohenberg and Kohn were the first that provide a detailed practical version of Thomas and Fermi theory and come up with many equations and major theorems that solve the analytical problems of the DFT they said that all the information is contained in the DFT which is a simple function of the three coordinates only that means energy is a function of density which itself is a function of three coordinates that means it's a functional mathematical sense the major two theorems are the first theorem is that the ground state energy is a function is a functional of electron density as we have just said and the theorem second which is a very important crucial which is state that the electron density that minimizes the energy of the overall functional is the true ground state electron density that means by this method we will get the ground state electron density once we know the exact electron density we will know the nuclear position and the number of electrons overall it uniquely determines the external potential or the charges or position of the nuclei now a bit more detailed version of this DFT energy is equal to kinetic energy is a function of density nucleus electron interaction is a function of again density Coulombic interactions and the exchange correlation this is a crucial one so all here we need the electron density this electron density for a normalized wave function or electron density can be given as this by this equation so this the this this equation can be divided into, the, into this thing as a known part as this kinetic energy nuclear electron interaction and the coulombic interaction and exchange correlation is the unknown part this is something that we know and we can approximate we can calculate but exchange correlation part this term will make up 
all the error associated with these three terms so this is something that needs to be approximated and it, it includes all the quantum mechanical terms moreover this T E and E this J term and exchange correlation this term are all functionals as they are function of electron densities now how did we solve these equations in calculations so before discussing DFT I will first discuss the wave function theory with the Schrodinger equation H psi is equal to E psi it uses the variation principle E is equal to minimize psi and the expectation value here we are seeking the wave function that minimizes the expectation value of Hamiltonian and hence minimizes the energy so we took we pick some trial wave function as long as it minimizes the expectation value over the psi and the minima one that correspond to the exact and the minima one will correspond to the exact wave function so because from the variation principle we know that we cannot go below if we have the variation principle so by this we will get the wave function similarly we use the same level procedure in the DFT instead of being psi or wave function being trial here we have the trial density so this is no longer its expectation value as here is the integral over the space since it continuously spread over the space moreover this part is a universal constant of kinetic energy and the inter electron interactions so Hohenberg and Kohn proved that universal functional contains a rest of the energetics and this really exists so given that functional we would try psi after psi uh, not psi we would try density after density and hence we can obtain the minimized energy correspond to the exact electron density now this is the way of writing in detail this DFT energy so energy of the real system with the electron density uh, rho can be computed as this way non interacting system kinetic energy is a function of the electron density is a function of the coordinates the nuclear electron interactions and the electron electron interactions and this is the correction term so this correction term for making the electrons interact as in this equation we have treated the non electron non interacting system by using this correction term we would make this interacting so it is specified that interacting system and the non interacting system has the same density it means the exact correlation contains some piece of kinetic energy and the potential energy corrections now how do, did we go in calculating so we express the density in the orbital basis sky this sky is an occupied molecular orbital and these two terms are similar to the Hamiltonians that we get in wave function theory now this this term is the integration of density over all the space interacting with orbitals that define the density and this has to be self consistently as we don't know this density until we don't have orbital so each time we would have a so as we just said this middle term has to be self consistently solved as we don't know this density until we don't have orbitals so each time we would have a set of orbitals that compute a new density so it's, we solve for orbital x that will generate a new density and the new density will be used in the equation and that this term the exchange correlation part this is the most crucial part that contains all the information all like the all the correction from this uh, kinetic energy and the nuclear electron interaction the electron, interact, the electron interactions and also this exchange correlation part last term uh, would contain some piece of kinetic energy and also the electron electron corrections as the above equation states now to give a more detailed this exchange correlation part I'll give you more I, I'll highlight the mathematical details of the most widely used b 3 exchange correlation since it is a hybrid functional as in our previous slides we have stated that it's something that uses the quantum mechanically derived parameters and all sort of 
quantum mechanical terms are there and it is rigorously constructed for a set of atoms so basically functional has this form it has a parameter from the local density approximation it has a hardy fock parameter also it also have this b88 parameter lip parameter from the lip lip uh, the scientist lee and part and also have the v and w v w and ed so these are the, the, it's it, this is the functional form has been derived for a set of like the for a most uh, widely used and for a set of atomic molecules. now this functional which sometime has been considered as the heart of the dft as accuracy of a calculation is entirely dependent upon the selection of the functional this exchange correlation functional is depend upon the density or the nature of the density how the it treats it may be uh, the gradient of the density or it may be the second order uh, interactions so this accuracy can be ranked on the basis of the treatment of the accuracy treatment of not the accuracy treatment of the density the more th the sophistication treatment of the density greater will be the accuracy so the first is the local density approximation which treat density at a particular point whereas the gradient generalized gradient approximation it treats the charge density as the gradient the gradient in the charge density it considered the whole non homogeneity of the density as the in the molecular orbitals is there now the meta gg which depends on the density its gradient and its second derivative also however hyper gg mix the fixed fraction of the exact exchange from the local hybrid as we have just see in b3 part and this is the most sophisticated rpa method is utilizes all the conchem orbitals unoccupied as well as the occupied now see local density approximation are not that much sophisticated so these are computationally expensive at it will treat only some set of basis however the rpa method and the this mitrle method method are much more sophisticated and much more expensive and that's why much more accurate so much widely used now that's all for today as this is my first ever recording presentation so sorry for the in between interruptions <laughs> as i am not able to handle and record this properly so i will improve the quality of the presentation and material thank you for listening bye